Hello there! Welcome back to the vlog. I am Mr. Thane. If this is your first time seeing one of my videos, I teach kindergarten in a public school and I do a daily vlog. Sometimes it's just about my daily life, sometimes it's, an, it is a to, it's a topic that I'm fired up about, such as this one. I do teaching tip videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, along with a whole bunch of other stuff. And if you're a longtime subscriber, welcome back. Thanks again for joining me. So today I wasn't sure what to vlog about. I was just gonna do a regular vlog about my day, but then I got inspired, inspired to talk about something that is close to my heart and I am genuinely, truly passionate about. I'm a passionate educator, I'm a, I'm a passionate teacher, but within that, something that gets me excited and fired up is small group instruction. That's my bread and my butter. That's the thing that I'm the best at. Uh, there, I'm, 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 I am good at some things and I'm not good at other things. I am good at small group instruction. It's my thing. And what I wanted to talk to you about today was the buzzword differentiation and why most teachers got it wrong. And it's just a word that gets thrown around too loosely and teachers think they got themselves covered. Oh yeah, I'm differentiating. See, I got this kid over here. He's doing, he's doing four more problems and this girl, she only has to do the front of the paper. No, 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 no. That's not working. That's not differentiation. I mean, it technically is, but it's not what it's meant for. So. This is the case for small group instruction. <coughs> Here we go. So, imagine this. Imagine you're going to a PD this August. It's one of those things where you're not really don't want to, you don't really want to be there. Come on, let's be honest. It's a PD, it's August. You, you, it's summer. You don't want to be the PD. It's on technology, okay? So, you don't really know exactly. You've been given, you've been given some vague outline of what it's going to be about. And you as a techno as a technology savvy person and you go and you sit down and it's just one person giving you a lecture or a professional development on a myriad of topics but you already know about all of these things you already know about google drive and you already know how to use the smart board and you already know how to use powerpoint or you know how to make a survey within google sheets you already know these things you know about the district-wide website that you use for kids to get on. You know how to log in. You know all this stuff. So you see it as a complete waste of time. Now, would you rather as a teacher in this PD do that, go in and it's an hour, and maybe, maybe, maybe there's a little bit of a nugget for you in there because they're going to differentiate for the teachers who already know about tech. What they're going to do for you to differentiate is they're going to, uh, at the end of the... The, the activity that you're going to be doing in the PD, since you already know a lot about technology, yours is, going to be, yours is going to be harder than everybody else's. Or you're going to have to do more work. You have an extra paper to do. Or you have to, you have to help all the other teachers. No, I don't want to do more work. I, just because I, I'm being punished because I already know the material. No, that's not right. I shouldn't have to do more work. I shouldn't have to do more difficult work just because I already know about it. So would you rather do that sit through a PD that you already know and you're not gaining anything out of for a whole 60 minute lesson and maybe there's a little tiny nugget that you, you could glean from it and you go walking away you're like, I guess I learned about, I guess this will help me. Or would you rather have a situation where you're entering a PD and beforehand you receive some sort of survey or questionnaire so the presenter of the professional development on technology can gauge and kind of find out where you are and what your, what your comfortability is with whatever they're teaching. And based on the survey, they will ha based on the survey, they determine that you are advanced in the topic. And so when you get there to the PD, instead of you sitting through an hour PD with everybody else having to do the same thing, and maybe just a little bit you're differentiated for by, you by mm, we'll give them more work. Instead of that, you have a highly you have a highly focused lesson that's specifically just for you but instead of an hour it's only 15 minutes and the rest of the 45 minutes you get to work on your own pace you get to work on something else your lesson plans you have free time to, to talk with your colleagues you have choices in what you want to do and for 15 minutes the instructor has specifically designed a lesson just for you based on your area of need that's true differentiation right there. You're being, that's true differentiation, that's small group instruction, and that's worlds, worlds more beneficial than differentiating where the, the high kids get to do two pages instead of one, and the kids that are struggling only have to do one of the sides. That's not true differentiation. So I hope my little analogy at the beginning wasn't, was helpful for you to see, put yourself in the student's shoes, 
When you're teaching your math lesson and you teach one topic to 25 kids and you've got the four high kids that they have to do a little bit extra work or they have to do a little bit more difficult work and you have the low kids that only have to do the odd problems, that's not, that's not gonna, that it works I guess, but it's not gonna work the way you want it to work. Instead, take that hour of time and instead of having one 60 minute lesson, you have four 15 minute lessons where they are, where you have four different lessons for four groups of students. And before you teach your unit, you have some sort of pretest or some sort of data point that you can draw from and you can group the kids accordingly and you will have a different lesson for each group. Now it might be on the same topic. You might be teaching multiple, you might be teaching fractions but the higher kids can be doing it a completely different way or they may be doing more advanced work with the fraction work, but it's a completely different lesson that will challenge them the right way. Or maybe they're ready to move on past fractions. Why am I learning fractions? I already know them. Maybe they tested out of fractions with a pretest. The students that are struggling might get the entry level fractions. Maybe they didn't get fractions at all, so you gotta go back and you gotta dipstick and you gotta teach about and you gotta, you gotta review multiplication first or addition facts. Four different lessons. I know it's more work on your part, but who gets to benefit from that? The kids. Your students will, because it's all about your students. Teaching one lesson to the whole class works from time to time for certain subjects, for certain topics. But my case, my case is this, the small group instruction, when you can do that, when you can group your students based on, based on data points that you've collected, the impact on that is astronomical. My first, the first year I fully implemented this, this system of grouping my students based on their needs, the, in kindergarten, I had my, 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 highest, my highest performing students were able to read at a beginning second grade level by the end of kindergarten because they were receiving highly focused, highly targeted lessons that were just for them. And my students who were on the kindergarten level were receiving their kindergarten work. I had to do a lot more work. I had to teach four separate lessons, in some cases five, but the students benefited from that greatly because they got what they needed and when they needed it. I find out, so the easiest way to do this is before teaching, and, and no, this is not, you don't put kids into groups at the beginning of the year and keep them in the same group. If you're in the red group, you're in the red group the whole year. That's not how it works. Before you teach a new topic or a new unit, anything like that, you do some sort of pretest or you get some sort of data point from any type of assessment you want. Preferably multiple data points because sometimes kids don't do well on a certain test. You get more than one data point, then you group your kids based on ability, based on knowledge of the topic or performance. And you try to get it to about, I don't like to do more, I mean, depending on class size, five is my max for small groups. Uh, any more than five, you're, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's, it can get tricky. So I try to limit it to five, but group your kids based on their need. Find out where your kids are at and then give them what they need to move forward. No matter what grade you teach, you have a select amount of standards that you have to teach. Move through the standards in a fluid way. Billy gets what he wants when, Billy gets what he needs when he needs it. If he's not ready for fractions yet, but Jimmy is, give Jimmy fractions. Billy's still working on addition, Billy needs addition. But don't move Billy on until he needs to move on. Kids learn at their own pace and their own rhythm. Be there with them to be that support system. Challenge them when they need to be challenged. Push them when they need to be pushed. Help them, help them aim and, and achieve higher than they even thought possible. But when you use this model of small group instruction for your core subjects, reading, math, writing, you will, I promise you, if you implement that fully and you truly do it the right way, you will have the, you will have the greatest year you've ever taught. Your students will know the most they've ever known and your students will achieve higher than you even thought possible. So there you have it. That is my spiel. That is my plea for small group instruction. It's my bread and butter, like I said. If you have any other questions about small group instruction, about how I do small group instruction, go to my channel page and the teaching tips playlist. I've got a ton of videos on small group instruction. If I can't answer any of those in the videos, feel free to comment or email me. This is something that I'm very, very passionate about and I would love to share anything with you on it. For example, I have some videos where you're probably wondering, well, what are the other kids supposed to do when they're not with you learning in their small group? I've got lots of different ideas for you on that. So check out my videos in the playlist for teaching tips. And um, if I can't, and I, like I said, if I can't answer anything on those videos, if you have any further questions, 
feel free to reach out because I'm, I would love to help you. So, all right, find a gift, share it with the world, and remember, you are worth it. See you tomorrow.